day as it was yesterday. Amen. Ain't you glad that God don't ever change? Amen. Man, if God changed, we'd be in trouble. We wouldn't know what to do. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Well, we're thankful for all of you here this morning. Just thank God for you. We're just looking to Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. And he's the reason we're here. Amen. He is the reason that we're here. Praise God. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Amos. And I want to just speak to you here this morning just as briefly as I can. I've got a lot of scriptures, but I'm going to try to just get through them really quick. And uh, I'll try to make this as painless as possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you get the book of Amos, say amen. I know you've discovered it. Amos, A-M-O-S. It's right there in the, in the Bible. It's in the B-I-B-L-E. Everybody got it? Amos, chapter 3, and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Someone think, oh, no, not another gloom, doom, despair, and agony message. <laughs> no, it's not going to be gloom, doom, despair, and agony. Amen. I mean, you've got to hear the rest of the story. See, a lot of people don't hang around until they hear the rest of the story. They just hear the first part, and they never get the second part. Amen. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath nothing or taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare from the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? I mean, we've got a lot of trouble in our nation today. You don't think for a second that God's not fully aware of what's going on. It's predestinated. It will, God's word will come to pass. There will be hatred and evil and murder and mayhem and ungodliness such the world has never seen since the times of Noah. That's before us. That's what you can expect to happen in the world. It's prophesied. It, it, you know, yes. Men shall wax worse and worse. It didn't say men will get better and better. And sometimes we get in our heads that hey, people's going to get better. No, the Bible says they're going to wax worse and worse. And it's an evil atrocities that was done to that man up there in Minnesota. There's no question about that. But the one should be punished is the one that did the work, that did that to that man. Yeah. That, that officer should be punished. Yeah. But, but other people, innocent people with stores and you know, taking away their, their living and all because of an act of one or two people, you know, it's insane. So when I see insanity going across the world and in our nation, there's one thing that comes to me. That's the work of the devil. Yeah. So there's a spirit in the world that's manifesting itself. It manifested itself just recently in the past few years with the, in the Muslim religion, how they were murdering so many innocent people. Guess what? That spirit is still there. That hatred is still there. And that hatred is in our nation. The prejudice. Let me tell you, I've always preached this. I was able to even preach or tell people, if you've got a prejudice spirit, you're going to bust hell wide open. You're going to go to hell. You can look at me funny if you want to, but we are not to have respect to persons. Amen. Amen. God made us all human beings, and we have a right to the cross just like everyone else has had. But now when we have respect to persons, and we have prejudiced hearts, and see, that's what this evil is all about. That's why this hatred is there, is to get you to hate. It's to bring you out of a, a spirit of love and compassion to hate. Am I making any sense? Yes. 
but but it but it is the plan of God. This is ha- this is happening because God is revealing the hearts of the people, the real attitude of the people. Amen. And then he says, "Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared; who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken; who can but prophesy?" And again, in Amos three and three, there, the third verse: "Can two walk together except they be agreed?" Amen. The reason God is saying this is he's saying that I can't walk with you unless we're in agreement. We cannot walk with the Lord unless we are in agreement with the Lord. We have to agree with him. I don't know about you, but you know, I want to walk with the Lord. Because I found men in the Bible that walked with the Lord that were blessed. Amen. And they want to be blessed. I want to live under a blessing, not under a curse. Amen. For me to live under a blessing and not under a curse, I've got to walk with the Lord. If I walk with the world, if I walk with the devil, if I walk with the, the people of the world, their lifestyles, if I begin to uh, yield myself to that kind of lifestyle, guess what? I'm no longer walking with the Lord. So I want you and I to walk with the Lord and walk and be a blessed man and woman. Amen. Amen. Now, there is a common statement that most churches make. And this church, I believe that we would, we would also make this statement. Listen to this statement. The church is not a fellowship of sinless people. We are a fellowship of forgiven people who by God's grace are pursuing a life of holiness and <coughs> obedience to our Lord. Can you say amen to that? That is really saying there's no one here better than any other person. We're all in this thing together. We're in the same boat, amen. And we're traveling along the same road, amen. We're going, our destiny is the same place. We have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, there are obstacles that we have to deal with almost daily in our lives. We're something all of us have got to overcome. But we are in this thing together. We're not separate. We're not the long ranger, in other words, you know. And, and talk to we are in this thing together. And you say, praise the Lord. So now, there should never be any, uh, uh, what I would call, spiritual pride (coughs) if a brother or a sister was to make a mistake or fall or get hindered in their walk with the Lord. The Bible says when you see your brother sin a sin that's not unto death, to pray for him or pray for her. It didn't say call him Tom, Dick, and Harry and let them know that you've seen, you know, Joe Blow walk out of the liquor store. Amen? It doesn't mean, amen, that you can condemn anyone. It said to pray for one. And guess what the Bible said? And it said... They would, that God would forgive them of their sin. Yeah. So what this is all about is letting us understand we are in a race together. We are in the same boat. We are pursuing the same thing. Amen. Now if you are coming to the church and you're not pursuing uh, a life of obedience and dedication and holiness unto the Lord, you're going to fit like a round peg in a square hole. Amen. And how many of those round peg won't fit in a square hole? It just don't happen that way. Amen. But if you're pursuing something, if you have a desire to serve God, if you have your heart is toward the Lord and you want to make heaven your home and you want to avoid the destruction of hell, praise God, and live eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ and be a, a man and a woman Amen. That that proudly serving the Lord with everything within you. You are going to fit, amen, in this house of God and in all God's churches everywhere that you go. It's pursuing, amen. It's not saying that I have arrived. I want you to know I have not arrived. You have not arrived. I don't think you have, and I'm not judging that, but I'm just saying I believe you have probably not arrived either. But we're going for something. Amen. We got a goal for us, amen. We got something to achieve, praise the Lord. And you you know what we should be doing? We should be helping one another. Amen. Amen. That's when we see our brother fall or our sister fall or, or this one makes a mistake or that one makes a mistake. Amen. We should be reaching out in love. We should be praying for that person. Amen. When we come together to pray, amen. It's not amen judging. It's not in condemning. But it is in praying for one another. Amen. That our sin would be forgiven. Amen. That we would make heaven our home. That's my goal. Amen. And I hope it's your goal. Amen. I want to live with Jesus, amen. Now listen, when I think about hell, I don't know if any of you have ever dreamed about hell or had a vision of hell. 
But I have. And I'm going to tell you something. Hell is a place. It's a literal place of the fact that you are going to be tormented forever in the flames of fire. I seen hell one time, and it was enough for me to try to avoid it with everything within me. Hell is a horrible place. Jesus described it as a place, amen, of everlasting torment, amen. The Bible describes it as a lake of fire that burns forever and ever and ever. Who in the world would choose to want to go to hell? And you know, the Bible also teaches us that God's not going to send anyone to hell. That it's going to be our own choice whether we go to heaven or we go to hell. God does not want any solitary, not one person, amen, that's ever lived to go to a devil's hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. It was not even created for human beings. But hell, the Bible tells us that hell has enlarged itself because of human beings going to this horrible, horrible place, amen. So this is a place I want to escape. If you got any sense at all, you would want to escape this place called hell, and you would want to live, amen, in a place called heaven, amen, that's filled with people that love God. Praise the Lord. So that's what our choice, and that's what all of this is all about. I'm not dealing, when I take the word of God, I'm not dealing, amen, today. I'm not dealing for today. I'm not dealing for about yesterday. I'm not dealing just for tomorrow. I'm dealing with eternity. I'm talking about, amen, where you're going to spend the rest of your eternal life at is either one place or the other, amen. I'm going to say eternal because that's what the, the Bible teaches me that hell is. It is everlasting. It is eternal. It doesn't just give out one of these days. It goes on forever. Ever. So I'm dealing, amen, with a place called hell and a place called heaven. <clears throat> and I wonder who we're walking with. I wonder if you know who you're walking with. Who are you walking with? You know, you know he said, it, 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 if we can't walk, how can we be agreed and walk different ways? How can two walk together except they be agreed? So I want to walk with the Lord. I want you to walk with the Lord. That's what this church is all about, is to prepare us for the coming of the Lord. It is to prepare us for eternity. Yes, I'm telling you, God will bless us. If you give, God will bless you. If you come to church and you try to serve the Lord, God will bless you. God will take care of you. God will meet your needs. God will give you the needs of your life. Amen. He will take care of you, amen. But listen, life is more than food and raiment. Life is more than things. Life is more than material things. Life is more than having a good place to live or a house, amen, or a car, amen. Life is more than having a good job or having grandchildren, you know, and do the good, good, good thing and all that. Life is more than the physical realm that you're living in, amen. We're preparing you for a life beyond this. And yes, God will take care of you in this life. But our focus sometimes are just uh, on the physical, they're on the now, amen. Our, our, our focus sometimes is just present tense. We're just thinking about today. We're just thinking about getting through today. Or we're getting thinking about tomorrow a little bit. But we're never thinking about eternity. I believe if we really thought about eternity and we really considered, amen, what is going to be required of us, amen, amen, to enter into eternity in that place called heaven, we would be much much more careful how we conduct our lives and how we, we keep ourselves, amen. Because then you realize this is something <clears throat> that we're being prepared for. This is something that's going to come later on down the road when we leave this world. And I know sometimes a lot of preachers don't ever, ever preach about the life hereafter. It's usually about what we can have right now. What do we get in this life right now? But my focus has always been on eternity and what it's going to take for all of us to get there. Amen. So truly, we are, amen, a fellowship of people, amen, that have had troubles and trials and heartache and heartbreak and all kinds of things have happened in our lives. Some of us have suffered divorce. Some of us have suffered backsliding and falling away and different things have happened in our lives, amen. But yet it's the day, amen, that we're concerned about now. And it's our future, amen. You can do nothing about your past, amen, except ask God to forgive you from your past. But from this day forward, amen, we can make a change in our attitude and in in the atmosphere of our lives, the atmosphere 
care of our homes, amen. We can make a change today, amen, for the better, amen, that we would be more prepared, amen, for what's coming in the future. I don't know about you, but I believe, amen, with all that I'm seeing in this world, amen, all that I'm seeing all over this planet, praise God, not just in our nation, but all that I'm seeing everywhere, I believe we're so close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we really knew how close we were, we would be in the altars crying out to God, asking God to help us, amen, that we might be prepared for what's coming up on this earth. Go, truly we're living in the end time. Amen. And it's time to get serious. Do yes. you realize the word of God has promised us a time in the end, unlike any other time in the history of the world. A time of great trouble and stress and troubles like the world has never seen. We are, amen, finding in the Bible where in the end time there's going to be doctrines of devils, amen. There's going to be all kinds of uh, hatred and evil in the world like I've said before. It's the time, amen, that you and I, amen, need to be conscious, amen, of how we're living for the Lord. Amen. So can two walk together except they be agreed? God said you're going to have to agree with me. To walk with me. Amen. The Bible says in one place how our sins have separated us from God. Amen. And I think about David. I mean, know that David was a man's own, after man's own heart. Amen. David was a man after God's own heart. He loved God. I mean, can agree with that. Amen. He loved God. He heard from God. I mean, believes that God spoke to David. He talked yes. to him. Amen. 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 He moved for him. He blessed David. Amen. He, and David wrote most of the book of Psalms. Amen. When you read the Psalms, you think, man, here's a man that's got to be close to God. Amen. Amen. But one day David sinned. Amen. He sinned. He looked out the window and he saw Bathsheba. Amen. And or, or she, she must have been a good looking woman. Amen. But I'm telling you. Amen. He went after Bathsheba. Amen. Not only did he sin with Bathsheba, but he had her husband killed in the war. Amen. He put her, her husband up in the front knowing that her husband would be killed. So if David was, amen, he not only an adulterer, he was a murderer. Amen. But you know, of all the times that, that David acknowledged his sins, and every time that he he got before God. He said, Lord, it's not me. I've sinned. I've done this. I don't believe he acknowledged his sin. Because what happened? There was a prophet that had to come to him. See, God quit speaking to, to, to him. He didn't talk to him, amen, after that sin. God didn't speak to David then. No, he didn't. He sent a prophet to him. And he said to the man of God, when the man of God come into David, he began to tell him a story, amen, uh, and, and relating, amen, this, this story about this, this person and all that. And you can go read the Bible about your own self if you want to, because I'm just throwing this in. But listen, he talked to, to uh, uh, the, 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 God talked to the prophet. He didn't talk to David, he talked to the prophet. And he sent the prophet to David, amen. And you know when the prophet got to David, he told him a little story and he said, David, you're the man. You're the one that sinned. You're the one that did this, amen. Because see, sin had separated David from God. But yet God was merciful unto David and he loved David. So he sent him a warning. He sent him a word. He sent him somebody, amen, with the truth to let him understand. Amen, David, I love you. Amen. You're a man after my own heart and I pray appreciate you. But amen, because of your sin, you have separated yourself from me. Amen. Well, what did David do? David turned and he turned his heart back to God. That's what God wants us all to do. Amen. I tell you, nobody in this church, amen, has done everything right. But thank God for the few, amen, of us that acknowledge our sin and thanks God, amen, for his grace and then his blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only just covered, but it takes away the sin of the people. Amen. It's when you acknowledge your wrongdoing. It's when you acknowledge you didn't right. It's when you acknowledge, amen. That's when the grace of God comes in and touches you and, and helps you and delivers you and puts you back in the right relationship with the Lord. Amen. There's so many promises in the Bible, but all the promises of the Word of God, him, it just hinges, it hangs on one thing. It's on our obedience. It's not what we're going to do. It's not about our obedience. God loves us all. Do you realize he doesn't love anybody in this room any more than he loves the other one? Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's not no person in this room that he loves any more than the other person. He loves us all the same. 
Every one of us, God wants to bless. Every one of us, God wants the best for. Every one of us, God wants to give us good things. Every one of us, God, amen. He wants our bodies healed. He wants our minds healed. He wants our souls free, amen, to worship him. He wants us blessed, amen. He wants you to have food. He wants you to have clothing. He wants you to have a roof over your head. He wants you to have a nice automobile. He wants the very best for you because that's why Jesus came and died on the cross, that we might have life and life more abundantly. That's how much God loves us. So why does God bless some and some are not blessed? It's because, amen, of sin. It's because, amen, that we have not given ourselves to the Lord. That's the problem, amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. you say amen or oh me, don't matter. Amen. But it's the truth, amen. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Ephesians 2 and 2 says, we're in time past. You walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You, in times past, we walked that way. But among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We've all walked with the world. We've all talked with the world. We've all appreciated the things of the world. We've all done things, amen, that the world does, amen. But the Bible says that was in the past, amen. See, there's a separation, always a separation from the world and from the church. That's why it says come out from among the world and be a separated people, amen. God has called us, amen, to be children of light, not children of darkness, amen. We've called us, amen, to, to walk in the spirit. The Bible said if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, amen. He didn't call us, amen, to walk in the flesh. He didn't call us to walk with the devil. He didn't call us to walk, amen, as the world walks, amen. But he called us to walk in the spirit, which just simply means amen, to walk with the Lord, amen. That's what the Bible is talking about. God wants to agree with us, amen. If we walk in the spirit, if we walk with the Lord, he's going to bless us. He's going to meet our every needs, amen. And we love Jesus. I can see this going over like a lead balloon. But that's quite all right. Amen. Amen. And we love Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Notice it says, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh. In other words, you're supposed to have already crucified your flesh. Amen. That means to die out to the Lord. How many times have I got before the people and said, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Amen. It's when you wake up in the morning. You can't wake in. Amen. If you walk out the door and get on the job, you've got to crucify the flesh. Amen. When you get up, you've got to put on the Lord Jesus when you yes. get up. Amen. Jesus said, when call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. He said, if you love me keep my commandments. Uh, these are the word of God. It's in the Bible. Amen. But we don't want to read those, those uh, verses. Uh, we just want to get to the blessing package. Amen. We want to get the healing. We want to get to the miracle. We want to get, amen, over here. Amen. Of all the good things of God. But we don't want to go through the fire to get to them. Uh, we don't want to go through amen. Uh, amen. Crucifixion. Amen. Uh, to be blessed. Uh, let me tell you. Jesus had to be crucified uh, before he become amen. Uh, one who has all power power in heaven and in earth. There had to be a time of crucifixion. He had to go, amen, into the wilderness, amen, and fasted, amen, amen, 40 days and 40 nights before the power of the living God came upon him, amen, and he was able to do the works that he did. He had to go through some trouble. He had to go through some trials. He had to go through some hard places, and then he had to go to the cross to fulfill his mission. I'm telling you, without a cross, amen, they can't be no glory. Amen. Without submission, there can never be an anointing. Without submitting yourself to God, there will never be a blessing coming from the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the pattern. He's the one amen that we're to follow after. If we follow after him, we will receive of him. Praise the Lord. Amen. He crucified his flesh. He denied himself. Even when he was in the garden, oh, he said, oh, the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing but he thank God crucified his flesh obeyed the father and was able to give himself to be the savior of the world but there was a cross to bear and Jesus told you now you take up your cross and follow me 
every once in a while? No, you take up the cross and you follow me when? Daily, every day, there's a cross for me to bear. Every day, there's a cross for you to bear. Every day, there's a life, amen, that must be crucified. Every day, there's a desire that's got to be put under your foot. Every day, there's a sin that does easily beset you that's got to be dealt with. Every day, there's temptation. Every day, amen, there's voices. Amen, there's lies. Amen, there's conceit. There's all kinds of things is going to come against you that you got to deal with every single solitary day of your life. But somebody said, you're making it hard to be a Christian. I'm telling you, it, may, it is hard to be a Holy Ghost filled man or woman of God because you got to crucify yourself. And guess what? God's not going to do it for you. He said for you to lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, if everybody, everybody wanted the power of God in their lives, the only way to do it is crucifixion. That's the only way. Amen. Your life has got to be dealt with. You've got to come to, your, to a place in your life that your ambitions, your desires, the things of this life no longer means anything. To have the blessings of God upon you. That's when God, don't you understand? That's when God can really bless you. It's when you can be trusted with riches. When you can be trusted with riches. When you can, when you can be trusted with a million dollars, God will give it to you. That's the truth. If you can be trusted with a million dollars, I believe God will give it to you. Why? Because God knows what you're going to do with it. He'll put money in your pocket. He will bless you. When you come to that right relationship with God, when you're walking with the Lord. Yes. Come on, walking with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, my meat, what sustains me, what keeps me going. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Yes. That's his desire, yes. to finish his work. Yes. You say, Brother Hayes, I'm just, I'm not a preacher. I'm just someone that's here in the congregation. Let me tell you something. We're all called to be witnesses for the Lord. Amen. Your ministry might not be in a pulpit, but your ministry is out here in the marketplace. It's at Walmart. That's why the Bible says to abstain from all appearances of evil. You know what that mean? That means we, we should keep ourselves, from any, even, even if it appeared to be wrong, if it appeared to others to be evil, we should abstain from it. It means to guard ourselves, to really watch out of, the, of what we're projecting to, to others. Because it's important. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without you living a holy life, no man can see Jesus in you. The Bible says, your written epistles read of all men. Wherever you go, you're a written letter to all men. So the only way they can see Jesus in you is to walk a holy life, a godly life, a life of separation, a life different from the world. Not too many amens. Not too many amens. And you know, there's another thing about it that I, I want you all to understand. There is a much higher standard for people to take, it takes this position that I'm in right here, it takes this word of God and minister to you. God expects more of me or anybody else to stand up here and take the word. He expects more of me or more than anyone that takes the word of God. He expects more of me. That can be found in Timothy and also in Titus. He expects more of those in the leadership that are leading God's people. See, we've got to come to a place, Brother Dave, we've got to come to a place that follow me as I follow Christ. Which means, amen, my mind is settled, my heart is settled. I'm going to follow Christ. I'm not going to follow anybody. And you can follow me with confidence that I'm not going to lead you astray. I'm not going to lead you the wrong way. I'm going to tell you the truth whether it hurts you or not. I'm going to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. And then I can say, follow me as I follow Christ because Christ, amen, is my goal. Hallelujah. But if I'm not living the life that I should be living, then I'm, I'm a deceiver. I'm saying, look, you can't follow me as I follow. Just do like I say. Don't do like I do. There's preachers that make fun of just what I just said. And they'll make that statement. And then they say, yeah, I know I did this. Yeah, I know that. But, you know, look, don't do like me. Do like I tell you. No, no, no. I don't want to be around nobody that says, do like I say, but don't do like I do. No, I want to be around somebody that says, hey, man, 
It's not just what I say, it's what I do. You can follow them. You can follow my actions. Watch. Say amen. Hallelujah. This is, the, this is what's happening in the end time. I see, a lot of people, you, just, you don't recognize it. The Bible said the Lamb's wife made herself ready. That means there is a preparation for the coming of the Lord. God said, amen, a man, amen, with the spirit of Elijah. He was called John the Baptist. He was a wild man. He come out of the wilderness, amen, with a message, amen. Not for the high, almighty, religious bunch of folk. He come with a message, amen, for the poor, the hungry, those that were in sin, those that were ungodly. But his message was from God. And he was preparing the people for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did a great job, and he did his job. But in the last days, I firmly believe that God's going to have another anointing, another word that's going to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. Because Jesus Christ, amen, is about to be revealed from heaven. He's not coming back as the, as the Lamb of God. He's coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not coming back as a Savior, but He's coming back as Judge. He's coming back the King of Kings. He's coming back to take vengeance on them that know not God and have not obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what just before why should we not prepare ourselves for it? Get ready. I want to be ready. If you knew how hard it is to preach a message like this, with my whole heart is to gather you up and give you a hug. Tell you I love you. No, that's not going to get the job done. It's only the truth. Amen. Open rebuke is better than secret Amen. love. Amen. It's only the truth that'll make us free. Amen. It's only the truth that'll wake us up. It's Amen. only the truth, Amen, that will preserve us into the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm not. Listen. The first thing I ever wrote in my life when I first got saved. He said, I'm not living this life to be saved. I'm living this life because I am saved. Amen. I'm not trying to be better than nobody else. I'm trying to fight for my life after the Lord Jesus Christ. Why can't you see that? And I'm trying to get you to see that is the life that Jesus wants you all to live. Then truly we'll be walking with the Lord. Truly we'll be having fellowship with the Father. Truly the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all sin. Hallelujah. It's when we walk after the truth, the light of the gospel. Hallelujah. I want to live in heaven. I want heaven to be my home. And I want to take you with me. I don't want to see you lost. Not a person, amen, I've ever even ministered to. Do what I want to see in the devil's hell. Forgive me, sometimes I get a little bit. The Bible says, If ye be been risen with Christ, Colossians 3 and 1, Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. See today, amen, the message is so perverted. You mean a prosperity that people are seeking after things rather than seeking after the things of this afterlife. Amen. Then he says mortify. That word mortify means to kill, to destroy, mortify. Therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanliness, inordinate affection, Concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked sometime when ye lived in them, but now put off the old man, put off his deeds, put off the desires of the flesh. And be saved, truly, really, truly saved. I know a minister. He was a good man. He's gone on now. He's died. But I believe this man loved the Lord. Amen. I didn't 
agree with some of his doctrine and stuff. We don't have to agree with one another's doctrine. We have to agree with one thing. And that's, we got to stand against sin. But this man, I love this man. But right before he died, he was in the hospital. And some of his folks come in there, this is what he said. He'd been in the hospital for about two weeks. They'd given up on him. This is what he said. He said, I got saved last night. One of the kid folks said, I think it was the daughter uh, or brother or son said, called call him daddy. Said, daddy, you've been saved for 40 years. He said, oh, no. I got saved last night. How can a man who ministered for 40 years, been in church for 40 years, say such a thing? Oh, if we really knew who we were walking with. Yeah. If we really knew yes. what fellowship we have and with who. Thank you, Lord. No, he found an answer. After 40 years, God was merciful. I just don't see it. After 40 years, I got saved. Oh, Lord. And they said everything was changed about him. His whole countenance was changed. And this is a man, I'll tell you what, I, I love this man. I, this man lived my whole life. As far as I can tell, this man had never run around, never done nothing like that at all. Never said a curse word. And all the years I knew this man, he never, I never heard him say a bad word. Never. I only seen him get angry one time in all those years. But you know what? I got saved last night. <laughs> He had an experience that we all need. The Bible talks about being filled with the Holy Ghost again. Oh, I'd like to be filled with the Holy Ghost again. Oh, how I would love the power of the Holy Spirit to come into this room and fill us all again with the power of the endless Christ. Oh, I love the sins. I'd like to get saved again. But I'd like to get saved all over again. Who are you walking with? See, but God is merciful. God is kind and God is good. He's merciful. Amen. He's so merciful. And then in 1 John 2 and 6, it said, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. You're talking about Jesus. Are you walking with Jesus? Are you walking as he walked? Totally sold out, dedicated, consecrated, holy. Come on. He says that we should walk as he walked. Oh, he said, well, I can never walk as he walked. The Bible's not going to tell you to do something you can't do. We can walk like Jesus walked. We can walk, you know, there was an old prayer thing it was A. Allen had a message one time, like him in consecration, like him in power. Oh, what a great word. Amen. Like him in consecration, like him in power. told us that all things are possible to him that believes. Praise God. He said if we had faith, we could speak to a mountain and it move. He said whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe in it that you would receive it. How many believes that's the Bible? Yeah. Amen. He said have faith in God. And then in Mark 11 and 24, he said, Therefore I say to you, what things to whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. That's the word of God. Then he said in Mark Matthew 7 and 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask you? 
God wants to give us good things. Jesus said in St. John 14, 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. In St. John 15, 7, he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, no, but if you live in me and I live in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. St. John 15, 16 said, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. That's God's promises. How do we get it to work? How do we get this thing to work? What is the key? What is the key to my healing? What is the key to my deliverance? What is the, the, the key? There's got to be a key. Well, Jesus, amen, he spoke the truth. Yeah. For he is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Blessed Lord. James summed it up and he said, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Right. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Amen. He's saying, walk by faith, not by sight. And if you will believe and not waver, you're going to have whatsoever you ask. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. But yet there is another verse of Scripture. Thank you, Lord. That we can be sure that we will receive. It's in 1 John chapter 3, two verses. Verse 22. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because, here's, the, here's how we know. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of the, his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us a commandment. This is why there's so much hatred. This is why churches are divided. This is why there are denominations. This is why there's sectarianism. This is why there's murder and mayhem. Because we're not walking in the commandments. And that commandment is that we love them. See, the first command is to love the Lord thy God with all of the heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the second is like to it. To love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the, all the law and the prophets. Just on those two commandments. And you know what? When we love one another, we're going to respect one another. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to honor one another. Come on. We're going to help one another. We're going to provide for one another. We're going to seek God for one another. We're going to bombard heaven for one another. Amen. If we see our brother or sister falling, we're going to reach down and we're going to pull them out of the flames of hell. Come on. We're, 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 we're going to be conscious not of just our own need, but we're going to be conscious of the other's needs. And when we fulfill that, then we know that whatever we ask, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Because he'll know that we're doing the, we're going to do the right thing with what he provides for us to do. And he loves the Lord. You know, Abraham, he didn't stagger at the promises of God. I don't want us to stagger at the promises. The promises of God are so powerful. And it's it, it just unbelievable. But they're for the believer. These signs shall follow them that believe. It's for the believer. The word believe means to have faith in. It's for people that have faith. It's for people that believe. It's for people that have separated themselves unto God and are walking with God. And I guarantee you then, you can ask whatever you will. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's power. Amen. Now you can examine yourself. And we need to quit looking at everybody else. We need to examine ourselves. Amen. Examine ourselves. And we examine ourselves. I would say it this way. It's best to examine yourself every day and pray. Amen. It's best to do it then. But as you examine yourself, you're going to find, as you really take a look, 
And I mean, I'm talking, if you really look at you, you're probably going to be disgusted. You're probably going to be disgusted. When I look in the mirror, I'm just, I'm just disgusted. Not with my physical appearance falling apart. But with everything, amen. You're probably going to be like me. You're probably going to be disgusted. You're probably going to think, Lord, I'm not even worthy. To even mention your name, much less come into the kingdom of God, Lord. I'm not even worthy. Stand before your people. I'm not even worthy to come and be a doorkeeper in the house of God. All of a sudden, you're going to be looking at yourself and you're going to see all the horrible things that's wrong. All your mistakes flood before you. The problems you have in your relationship with others and everything. How could I have said that? How could I have done that? How could I have ever done something like that? How could I? In other words, questions are going to come to your mind. I'm looking at yourself in the mirror. And you see everything wrong you and everything. You see how horrible a life and a miserable person you are. But if you would look, yeah. it's just a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. If you would do it and look and say, well, what does God say? Yeah. God, what do you see me as? Yeah. Amen. What do I look like to you, Lord? And I believe the Lord would speak to you and say, oh, you're my son and my daughter. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my son gave his precious life, his life blood for you. Oh, I've selected you. I wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. I look at you, amen, as someone that is saved. You're going to make it. In other words, God's word to you is going to be just the opposite of what you see in yourself. Because God looks, amen, at the blood of Jesus that has separated you unto him. And then he's going to speak these words to you. You're weak. You're weak. And I know you're weak because the flesh is weak. But if you will walk in the Spirit, if the Spirit is willing, then the weak can say, I am strong. And he's going to say it over and over to you. Let him that's weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. Let him, amen, or let her that's weak in the flesh say, I am strong. Because God's going to build you up in the Holy Ghost. He's going to build you up in Him. He's not sent His Son to condemn you or to condemn the world. He sent His Son to save us, amen. To lift us up, amen. It doesn't negate the Word of God. It doesn't take away from the truth. It doesn't take away that we should fall after holiness and godly living and separation from the world. It just means this. God loves you enough, amen. And had enough, amen, respect for you to call you by His grace. Put you in the, in the kingdom of God, amen, and just asking you to walk in the Spirit. That's what God said to us all. We're walking in the flesh and walk in the Spirit and enjoy the fruit, amen, of the Spirit and enjoy the blessings of God. Amen. And then after this life, live in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a gospel. What a God, amen. What a Savior. Let's give Jesus a hand to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it, it's... Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Let me close with this about a minister that I once knew. I think I've told you this before, but I'm going to tell you again. Thank you, Lord. I went up to visit this minister. He had a revival going. And I went out to have coffee with him. And uh, we were sitting in a coffee shop. And I was, uh, I couldn't see the people behind me. I was speaking with him. I was talking to him about his revival. And all of a sudden, he started weeping and crying. And I'm thinking, well, what in the world did I say? I mean, why? And I asked him, I said, why, why you, uh, did I say something wrong? Why are you crying? He just shook his head. He said, look behind you. I looked behind me. I didn't see nothing. I said, what's behind me? What are you talking about? He said, look, behind me. And I looked over and I seen a young man and a girl talking to one another at the table. And I turned back and I just did like that. Like I didn't, I didn't know what he wanted me to see. 
He said, they're lost. Can't you see? They're lost. This man had so much compassion that he was weeping for somebody he didn't even know. And I said, oh God, give me that compassion. Give me that love. Give me that. Put that in me. That I can look at someone that's lost and undone and have enough of compassion in my heart not to look at someone in bound with sin and see all the ugliness but to see the soul that needs Jesus. Amen. Always remember, you know, Jesus was a man of compassion. He walked in love. He walked in compassion. Never condemned. Just reach it out. But he was one of the hardest preachers that ever preached on planet Earth. Amen. You scribes, you Pharisees. He would get so angry, went into the house of God in the temple, made him a whip, went in there, turned the mud and changers, tables and chairs over, and whipped them with a whip and run them out of the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, now we see him, not just one side of Jesus, but the whole Jesus. It was because of sin. You have made my house be called a house of prayer. You made it a den of things. See the anger of the Lord. We've got to look at the whole thing, children. Praise God. For he's coming back. Amen. I said he's coming back. Amen. So who are you walking with today? I hope it's Jesus. I hope you will lay aside everything. Amen. That's hindering your walk with the Lord. Run this race with patience. Amen. And help somebody along life's way. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. While they sing something, I'm going to ask you if you need prayer. If there's anything going on we need you need prayer for. There's some that's not here that should be here today. I'm hoping they'll come. Hallelujah. But if there's anyone needs prayer, I want to take a few moments. If there's someone you know that needs prayer, you want to stand in for them, I'll agree with you. If there's someone going the wrong way, that made a wrong turn, you want to stand in for them, I'll pray with you. If there's somebody that's sick, discouraged, tormented, I'll agree with you. Hallelujah. Just gonna wait just a moment. Thank you, Lord. I cry in Savior. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God. God, there's many was in church lifting their hands, singing, praising you, but Lord, they made a bad decision. They turned down a dark road, Lord. Lord, it's a road that the devil set for them as a trap. But I pray, God, that you would speak to their hearts, turn them around. For I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would save, heal, and deliver, Lord. In Jesus' holy and precious name, I agree with my sister, Lord. God, that a change is coming, Lord. Glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those others. Bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, in my mind. Lord, I see. Lord has made a decision to go the wrong way. Lord, I try, but I no try. But I pray, God, for him, Lord. God, for your mercy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that there would be an awakening come. God, that there would be such trouble, Lord, it would turn them, Lord, to prayer. Turn them to you, Lord, the living Christ, God, with everything within them. I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray for those that are backslid, God. Lord, that once was on fire. 
that once ministered in the word of life, God, gifted of you, Lord. I pray for them, God. Lord, all those scattered all over this planet, God. Lord, they would like demons that love this present more and more than they love God. Lord, I pray for them, God. Lord, I'm not mad, and I know, God, that you're not mad. I know your compassion is still reaching out to a lost and a dying world. Have mercy, God. I pray you would have mercy upon our nation, Lord. Have mercy upon our president that's been through so much, God, and even more trouble for him. I pray, God, for deliverance, Lord, for peace, God, for our nation to have. And I know it can only come with a revival of your spirit, God, and your love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, when Brother Hayes was preaching, I thought about, I was working in the hospital one time down in Franklin, Tennessee, and it was on a Saturday afternoon. And they had called us and told us that they was bringing in a, a young man. He was about 16 year old, and he's dead. And they told us that when the family got there, there's a room that, you know, when someone dies, they want to put them, the family, they want to separate them from the other people. So they told us when this family got there to put them in the room. And it was, a, I think he was about 16 year old. He was out on this uh, four wheel or three wheel, whatever, and he, he had an accident. But anyway, so the parents came in. And when the parents got there, they didn't know that their son was dead. But anyway, they came up to us and they were trying to get information from us and, you know, um, wanted to know if he was okay. And I don't know, I don't remember which one of us dealt with him. But anyway, someone, you know, came and took him and put him in that other room. And we knew the doctor was going to be coming out and he was going to tell them that their son was dead. And I remember that day when that doctor walked into that room where they had it set aside and he had told them. That mother, she went to, she wasn't crying, but she was wailing. There is a difference in somebody crying. If you've ever heard somebody wailing, it is just one of the, Oh, it's so awful. It is so heartbreaking, that difference in a cry and somebody wailing. And there was that mother just been told that her son was dead. And as I was sitting there at my desk, I begin, you know, I, was, I began to pray for that family. And I began to pray for that mother. And I thought, God, you know, there's no way that I, I can even imagine what this mother is going for, through. But from the sound of her bo voice... You know, it was just about all that I could even bear just listening to that mother that had just been told her son was dead. And I was thinking about that because I was talking to a lady on the phone just a couple or three days ago. And she's got a daughter that's out in sin and out, you know, just like running wild. And she, she was talking to me and she said, I know that she's just about at the end of her road. And she said, I got up this morning and she said, I was thinking, and she said, I, I remembered the word of God that said how that Jesus left the 99, and he went after that one. And she said to me, she said, I'm going after my daughter. She said, I'm going after my daughter, and I'm going to bring her home. And, you know, and I don't know what was said next, but then she said to me, she said, you know, Glenda, she said, the hellfire and brimstone message is coming back to the church. She said, it's been gone a long time, but she said, it's coming back to the church. And I could hear the despair in this mother's voice as she was talking to me because she knew that there was only one thing that was going to help her daughter. She knew that everything else they had tried had failed. You know, a lot of people, sometimes they do things in love but you know what she knew that the desperation that her daughter was in she could hear that voice i mean i could hear that voice i could hear that cry that mother knowing how close to dying her daughter was and then she said that she said that message is coming back to the church and his brother hayes brought that out this morning i thought god here it is do you know today if i never hear another message i was blessed hearing this message today if i walk out this door today and i decide that i don't want to do what's right and i decide you know that i'm going to choose the the broad way and not go the straight and narrow way i was blessed today amen and i thank god for his word that he gave us to do today and now what am i going to do with it what am i going to do with it you know, it's like what he said, so true. The more I pray, the more I dislike myself. 
The more I pray, the, t the more I try to get close to God, the more I see things in my own life, in my own heart. Praise God. And God is helping me. Praise yeah. God. You know, I came in here just a few weeks ago. I was in here praying. Sister Diane, I was in here by myself. And, and then I, were, I was praying and I was praising God. And then all of a sudden I just started thinking. And I just told the Lord, I said, Lord, there's something I'd like for you to do for me. And I just began to talk to the Lord just like I would be talking to you, just talking to another person. I said, Lord, there's something I want you to do for me. And I said, Lord, this is what I'd like for you to do. I said, God, this is how I want to feel. And you know, a few days went by, just a few days. And you know, God gave me that prayer answer. He let me know just exactly. He let me feel just exactly what, how I wanted to feel, how I desired to feel. And God, hallelujah, he done just exactly what I asked him to do. I'm telling you, God is answering prayers. And I love the Lord this morning. Don't you love the Lord this morning? And I thank God for that message. I praise God for the message. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I praise God. And he knows we can be free today. We don't have to walk out of here bound. And I want to say that I praise God and thank God for Brother Hayes today. Not just because he's my husband, but because, praise God, of what he preaches and what he stands for.